So many times when we shoot with Kim, he's always talking about policy may come and go, but weather really impacts price. Kim, it's been an interesting week when it's come to weather. Well, you look at the freeze and the impact from it. The morning after it, in mid-morning, you had 11 cent increase in both uh, corn and wheat prices. You had 11 cent increase in so sorghum prices and a nine cent increase in soybean prices. Now, if you look over the last couple of weeks, they go back to April 21, wheat could be forward contracted for harvest delivery for 547, 625 on the 6th. That's a 78 cent increase. You got corn, 468 up to 525, a 57 cent increase. Sorghum from 563 to 605 and soybeans from 1201 to 1240. So what we've seen is we, some of that is that increase from the weather, from the freeze, but there's other factors going on in the market. What, what kind of message are we hearing from that cold weather in the markets? Well, I think what we're seeing is that we're in a weather market. You look at uh, all wheat uh, stocks, projected any stocks, 852 million bushels is a little over a billion last year. The average is a billion, 70 million. You look at corn any stocks, 411 million bushels, 506 last year, 528 million is the average. You look at corn, 1.35 billion, uh, you were almost at 2 billion last year, 1.9. The average for corn is 2.06 billion bushels. Soybeans, 120 million bushels. 525 last year, 909 for 18. The average is 474. We got tight stocks in the U.S., and so we're in a weather market right now. That's really focused in on, like, like you say, on the U.S., especially in this area. What are we seeing globally when it comes to the markets? Well, right now we've got the wheat harvest going on in India, Pakistan, North Africa. India may be harvesting a record crop right now. Uh, some of that may go on export. The Black Sea area, their crop looks relatively good. Over the last month or so, they've increased Russian expected production from 2.8 billion to just under 3 billion bushels. You've got Brazil that's harvesting a record corn crop this year and a record soybean crop. You got Brazil, Argentina, the Ukraine, they're exporting 51% of the world's corn exports compared to 36 for the United States. And then there's China. China is the gorilla in the closet in the China closet making all the noise. So you listed off a lot of countries in there with China being the last one. Let's dig a little bit deeper into China. Well, I think you've got to go back to that conference that the president had in Alaska with the Chinese premier. China now considers themselves equal to the United States. You know, you can go back a few years, China needed our corn, China needed our soybeans, China needed the products to import products, ag products from the United States. They don't need to do that anymore. Do they in the long run and need it? Yes, but they can, Brazil, Argentina, Ukraine, other countries are now supplying the corn and the, and the soybeans and the other commodities. So they consider themselves equal to us. You've also got China that is doing everything they can to increase their domestic production. That means they're increasing the use of the, the fertilizers, the increased use of uh, chemicals, the increased demand for machinery. As they buy machinery off the export market, that drives up our prices. As they import uh, the inputs, that drives up our prices. It does give us higher prices for our corn, our soybeans, our, our wheat. China needs us, we need China, but in some aspects, we need China worse than they need us for the, the products. So that, I think, is what's going in in China. It's a change in the structure of the world market. And, and with that, it seems like it's an ever-changing market when it comes to agriculture. What should producers really be focusing on now as they're thinking about selling future markets? Well, I think what they've always had to done. They manage cost and they produce a quality product that's wanted on the world market because we're in a world market. So I think some, uh, it's going to be difficult at some point in time, but manage that higher price when you get the opportunity for that higher price and manage buying those inputs. It's all about management. Put a hard pencil to which commodities you're going to produce. Excellent. Thank you very much, Dr. Kim Anderson, grain marketing specialist here at Oklahoma State University.